Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today on this very gloomy day, we had some exciting things happen at the house. Do you guys remember when me and my mom spent an entire day shoveling and digging and dying together slowly, a slow and painful death? Yeah, so funny story. We had been waiting for the demo saw, um, which I ended up borrowing from a friend of mine, which was amazing. So the demo saw we needed in order to cut the porch, because if you recall, the sill behind the porch was rotted out. So we had to cut the porch in order to get to that. So we'd been waiting and to blah, 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 this and that, whatever. Um, we got the saw. So Seth cut the porch yesterday, which was so exciting. I didn't realize that he was doing it yesterday, and I came um, to check on the house in the evening, and I was like, ah, so excited. Um, because now that it's, like, fun to not have your porch there and stuff, I mean, obviously, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it back eventually, but um, just because that was the thing that we were waiting for, and we couldn't do the rest of the bay window until the porch was gone because the porch was in the way of being able to dig it out. The porch was cut up. So Seth was like, I think that your dad can get the stuff with the excavator versus manually having to pick up all of the concrete. Oh, look, some deer. A brief pause. It's a mama and a baby. Can you guys see it? Let me zoom in. Let's see how close we can get to the deer before they get scared away. Also, see how the leaves are starting to change? Yeah, it's that time of year. This car's probably like, uh, it's just deer. Why are you standing there? Um, but maybe you guys don't have deer. We've got a lot of deer here and there. Wow. Talk about riveting footage. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Um, I think I was saying, oh yeah. So moral of the story is long drawn out story. Hi guys. How you doing? Really good? Oh yeah, they're doing good. Anyway, so dad came with the excavator today and he and Seth, while I was gone at work, got all of the porch taken out and even more so than that, wow, I'm so sorry. This is really long and drawn out. They totally dug that whole hole with the excavator. And I'm like, you know, like it's amazing and I was very grateful, but I was like, are you kidding me? All of that work that we did? Because Dad was saying before that it was hard with the way that the um, bay window was above it. It would be hard to get the excavator down there. But I think that with Seth there really um, telling him exactly where he could go, he was able to do that. But anyway, we'll leave the deer be. My goodness, was that ever easier than what we were doing it the hard way? <laughs> Classic. Um so thankfully, Seth and Dad did take some footage, so I'll show you that. And then I stopped in at lunchtime to see how things were going. I'm going to give you a fair warning that as the homeowner of this lovely establishment, it is a little nerve wracking to watch. Thank 
So I know we can't actually hear what they're saying um, because they didn't have mics on, but Dad said that they were talking about how it might be easier if the whole thing just, you know, fell down. <laughs> but I'm glad it didn't. Oh my goodness, are you guys as nervous as I am? Because, yikes, I'm kind of glad that I wasn't there. But at least I got to see the final product, so I knew that it turned out okay, but yikes. Okay, so at this point they're talking about the wood that's there to hold up the bay window and I guess it literally wasn't even like holding it up. It was just, it's just hanging there by itself, freestanding, which is crazy to me, but I guess it was well made. So definitely very soon we will have it jacked up from underneath it so it'll have that extra support there while they're working on the wall.
mind what foot it would make. Not a lot of weight. Let's say 18. 18 wide. Okay, so if you recall, um, there was the sill on the side of the house that the deck is going to be on, the patio is going to be on eventually, that um, had, it was all rotted out. I am so not wearing the right shoes for this. Disaster. Um, <laughs> Seth is over there laughing at me. I want to show you. Seth and Jay fixed the sill, which is the wooden sill, um, underneath that. And they put new wood in it so it's not rotted out and stuff. And in order to do that, they had to take out the stones that were there so that they could put the wood up there, you know? And in, instead of putting the stones back because it's not you're not even going to see this place, so it doesn't matter so much about being pretty, we decided to go with concrete here just because it's faster and easier and whatnot. So I'll show you what's going on here. Okay, so as you can see, the wood's all done already, and Seth is filling in the place. He made, like, these forms, right there, forms, and he's filling the inside of it with concrete, and then the concrete will dry, and then it'll be, you know, hard, obviously. Um, so he's doing a great job with that, and it's slow and gross work. But that's a really nice little rig there. Did you get the um, water figured out? Or did you get that from the creek? Uh, I got one of them to fill up with the hose. Right. The other one was super slow. So I don't think there's like compression or something in the compression mm -hmm. tank. Something. So I just dipped it in the uh, downstairs well. Oh, fun. It out. <laughs> Convenient. Lot, lot making good use of the downstairs well. So Seth and I are just talking about the bay window and what the best option the is window? for it. Sure. So obviously it's super awkward and annoyingly shaped because all of the corners are at like a weird angle. So you have to foundation it in a weird angle way. So you could... This is so much deeper. You pour your footer, but there's... Again? Wrong shoes. There's two foot here that you'd come out to, and then it'd be another angle, and then another angle across the front. Um, uh, we're a little deeper than we need to be here, probably. Uh-huh. And this all has to get replaced anyway. Yeah, this is in rough shape. This would just be a lot of cut blocks, like... You gotta cut all of these to the to this, cut all of this, and then all these have to be cut to the right angle on this end. And same with that, because that's not 90 degree. No. Which is it's doable. It's not impossible. It's just a lot of cuts. And right. Which is totally understandable why he wanted to do the pressure treated. Right, because it's a lot easier to, to right. cut and do stuff with pressure treated that way. But we were thinking, you two people, that it seems like it would be better to have concrete underground versus the pressure treated right. or tamarack or whatever we did right. and we could do it up just to where the ground is and then right if you just from there you could do wood if to make it look prettier but here's the thing does it have to be does it have to be right up against each other if it's underground like he was talking about making the cut so that it would look pretty you know it would look nice and not bad right. but does it have to be perfect underneath the ground it wouldn't have to be perfect but if it probably wouldn't be much less work. Like, right. Just because, I mean, you got to cut them all the angle anyway. I think you could do, you could do like a concrete, like from your footer up, whatever this is, three, maybe four foot, do uh -huh. your concrete wall. But expense-wise, I feel like that's, uh, blocks are a lot cheaper. Right. Than filling that all with, with concrete. And if you did concrete, you'd need more, like more rebar because you'd want to do some vertical and some horizontal rebar with it. Right. So I think you're probably cheaper with block. And and the nice thing about block is it 
I mean, you can you can do two or three tiers, stop for the day, and come back if you need to. That's, right. You know what I mean? Um, like, you don't have to do all the block all in one day. Uh, the other thing that I think we are going to have to do is either grab some more, like, 2 by 8s 2 by 10s even those ones that we didn't use for the sill that are still over mm -hmm. there. Um, put those across here to jack this into place while we work under it. Mm -hmm. And then whether we lay block up to here and leave a space for the final block to pull mm -hmm. that out, um, like that's right. how you would just thinking through how to do Another that. Another thing he said, Tom had said, was put plastic underneath it. I don't um, remember the reason, the but there was there. a reason. Yeah. And you'd want to insulate underneath here. Oh, while yeah. you uh, still can. Yeah. Like while this is still open. Definitely. I don't know. I just I don't love the idea of again putting wood underground. Right. Well, I feel like I feel like it seems like a better idea. Me not knowing anything, but just because then you know the wood you can refix it. Yeah. The overground stuff yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say I like the idea of sitting here of block vest. I think it's cheaper. It doesn't have to be totally done all at once. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of go at it a little bit at a time and make adjustment. Like again, it's just a lot of cuts, which is right. Which is is what it is. Whatever, mm -hmm. however you're gonna do it, that's how it's gonna be. So, but I would again, I would just do block maybe up to the the ground level, right? And then, and then you can. Although if it's one more layer of block, it might just be as easy just to do another layer of block as anything else. Right. So. I don't really care what it looks like. It'll probably be covered with like flowers and stuff. So. Right. Right. Um. So yeah. Yeah. So I think jacking it up is next, and then I can get a easier elevation for the footer, and we can go from there. So we would put something underneath it, and then jack. Yeah. That. So like those long two by. Or the eights yeah. over there on the ground behind the excavator. I think we could screw them together with those lag bolts we bought. Right. Put them across this way long way on the outside and use that to push this up where we want it to be. Right. And then we'll build up to it underneath it and essentially we'd probably go a little bit higher than we want and set it down and pull those out. Right. And then lay the last two or four blocks, whatever it is. Yeah. So. Sounds good to me. So as you can see, Seth here is a very knowledgeable guy, unlike myself. I make it up as I go. Wow. Some knowledge is better than no knowledge, I always say. So Seth actually, exciting stuff, is also um, renovating a house. Would you yeah. like to share any information on that? Uh, it's a small house that we bought last year. Uh, it's not even quite a thousand square foot, uh, but we bought it to... Not so much live in, uh, but to kind of experiment with to see if uh, it's renovating houses is something we can uh, manage as a family. Um, right now, most of it's been, been me, but once we get a couple of these other key elements in, uh, Jenny and the kids are hopefully going to come hang out while we work anyway. Right. So Seth has a wonderful wife, Jenny, and the cutest kids. And I'm not, I'm not saying that lightly because I like kids, but... Some more than others, and his more than most because they are like top notch cute, really cute. Yeah, they're pretty adorable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Seth is actually starting a YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah. How exciting is that? What's its name? Like Clark Work, like Clark Work, <laughs> which is funny because his last name is Clark. So, um, if you are interested in checking out his channel, I will put a card up to it and a link in the description below um it should be lots of fun so right. i know if you're watching this channel you probably like house renovations so i'm sure you will enjoy his channel as well yeah it'll be fun come check it out at least yeah so thanks seth for all your help yeah and thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time